as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police and his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. King King, on you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike and the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his underdog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. King met Mike Rafferty one afternoon when the sergeant was busy with paperwork at headquarters. The great dog was making an unofficial patrol of the town. Nearly everyone in Dawson knew him, and he accepted the men's pats and greetings with quiet dignity. But it was getting late in the afternoon and time for the sergeant to be through at the office, so King started back to headquarters. Mike barred his way in front of the Palace Hotel. Hey, Bucky, look at this dog. Yeah. He's a big one, all right. I'd like to own this dog. I'd never accept you as his master. Oh, yes, he would. Just treat him rough. That's all you have to do. Now, you're special. Teach him who's boss. Suddenly, a man you. grabbed one of King's ears and twisted it hard. King jerked himself away and hurt surprise. Ran a few steps and turned to face the big man again. You try to treat him rough, but you'll be sorry. Yeah, I can handle him. Hey, come on. Let's see what's going on at the El Dorado. King continued on his way, but he knew that Mike was an enemy. The next time he met him, he was with the sergeant. Dawson was at the height of its boom that summer, and the cafes, crowded with men from all over the world, had to be watched carefully by the Northwest Mounted Police. The sergeant and King had stepped into the Northern Lights Cafe to see that everything was under control. Hello, sergeant. My name's Mike Rafferty. I've been admiring your dog. What, son? What is? The gold legend. King's usually very friendly. How much will you take for it? He isn't for sale. Does he belong to you or the force? To me. You mean to say that a Mountie can afford to own a dog as valuable as King? I couldn't afford to sell him. Now, if you'll excuse me, I want to talk to Joe for a minute. Come on, King. <laughs> Man, what's so funny? Well, you're talking mighty big for a guy that's broke. <laughs> Hey, right now you can buy me a drink. Ah, uh, thanks. The bar's too crowded. I'll find room. Come on. Hey, what's the idea, Shovin? The idea is for you to get out of the way. You can stay behind me and watch your turn like everybody else. I don't like waiting. Now stand aside. Well, try and make me. All right, you ass boy. Now get up and get out of here unless you want more of the same. All right, I'm going. There's no need for you to go. Mike's the one who's going. What's that, Sergeant? You're under arrest for disturbing the peace. And uh, you're going to take me to jail? That's right. <laughs> Tonight I'm going to let you win. Let's go. Mike Rafferty spent the night in jail and was released the following morning when Bucky Andrews paid his fine. It was that same morning that the news of the strike on Mission Creek reached off. Did you hear about it, men? Mission Creek. As big as a bonanza. Bigger. Two hundred dollars to the pan. Well, how do you get there? Another round of rods. This was the big news that the gold-hungry men in Dawson had been waiting for. Another bonanza. Another El Dorado. Fortunes waiting for them at the end of a two-day trek up the Klondike. In a frenzy of haste, the prospectors packed their supplies and their mining equipment and started out. Some leading burrows, others on horseback, others on foot. A steady stream heading east, until by early afternoon, the cafes of Dawson were deserted. And Mike Rafferty and Bucky Andrews sat alone in the Monte Carlo. It's all your fault. What is? And why not go with the rest of them? If I didn't have to pay your gambling debts and your fine this morning, we'd have enough money to buy grub and equipment. Come all the way from San Francisco to do what? Sit in an empty bar room where we can't even buy a drink. Who says we're not going to Mission Creek? Well, how can we? What's to stop us? The fact that we haven't got any money to buy supplies. <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> hey, listen, Bucky. There'll be thousands of guys who'll be making camp along the trail tonight. All of them with good outfits. Yeah. 
where we be. Right here. Not on your life. We'll pick out the best outfit and take it for ourselves. You leave it to me. I'm tired of leaving things to you. Then sit here. I'll get a job from tech scrubbing the floor, polishing the bar. Stay honest and stay poor. Mike, just because you're big, just because you're packed dynamite and you're right, that doesn't mean you can get away with breaking the law. Are you with me or aren't you? Oh, I don't know. Think about it. By the time you've made up your mind, I'll be back with a claim that's worth a million dollars. A million million dollars, Bucky. Are you with me? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. A man can't give up a chance like this. Right. (laughs) Come on. Sergeant Preston rode slowly along the Mission Creek Trail with King trotting at his side. He anticipated no real trouble before the creek was reached. But the wild desire of the men to reach their goal led to many accidents. And at dusk, the sergeant ran into the first of these. Camp over to our right. All those men's hurt, King. Who? Who there? Need any help? Who's that? Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Sure do need help, Sergeant. My partner shot himself. Hey, what? He's carrying a shotgun. He stumbled and fell and the gun went off. Caught him in the leg. Can't seem to stop the bleeding. We'll see what a tonic it'll do. Easy, fellow. Sure be grateful if you take a look at him. King and I are about ready to make camp anyway. If you don't mind, we'll stay here with you. Sure be grateful. He's so pale, Sergeant. I think he's sort of fainted. Yes, yeah, we'll have to work fast. <laughs> Quickly and expertly, the sergeant applied a tourniquet. Then he dressed the wound again. In less than half an hour, color came back to the man's cheeks, and his strength returned. The sergeant was eating supper with the two prospectors when Mike and Bucky passed their campsite. It was dark by then, and only King recognized Mike's burly figure. He growled himself. But Mike and Bucky recognized the sergeant. It looks to me like he settled down for the night. (laughs) Any time now, we'll start looking for our outfit. Andy Carlyle and Bill Southern had made their camp near a spring about a hundred yards from the trail. The first faint sound of approaching footsteps awakened Andy, and he sat bolt up. He tried to see beyond the circle of light around the still glowing campfire. Bill, wake up. Oh, this isn't time to get up yet. We need a little more sleep. This sounds like an animal. Oh, you're dreaming. I don't hear anything. Where's the gun? Right here. Could be a wolverine coming after our food. I don't hear anything, Andy. I don't see anything. Oh, I'm going to sleep. Oh, all right. I guess maybe I was wrong. The two men rolled up in their blankets once more. But Andy had not been wrong. He had heard Mike and Bucky's stealthy approach. Now they were crouched in the darkness less than 50 feet away. Beyond them, closer to the trail, King was watching them. The sight and scent of the man who had hurt him, the man the sergeant had arrested, had made King restless. After he had eaten, he had left his master's side and loped along the trail in the same direction Mike and Bucky had taken. Now he waited. Suddenly, the big man rose to his feet and ran, a large rock in his right hand. King barked an alarm. It was too late to warn the two sleeping men. The rock crashed down on Andy's head. Bill raised himself in his blankets just in time to get it directly behind the ear. Hurry up. Get yourself one of the supplies. Let's let it go. Here. I'll shut the water. Now put that gun down. Don't shoot. I can see his eyes shining. Don't shoot. <laughs> King swerved as Mike fired, but part of the charge from the shotgun hit him. He kept running in spite of the searing pain. The distance he had covered in a few minutes when he had followed Mike and Bucky seemed to stretch on and on. But at last he saw the campfire, and he ran to his master's side. King, what's wrong, boy? Hey, been hurt. <laughs> Just like he stopped some buckshot. Just lie still here, fella. I'll be fixed up in a minute. King watched his master gratefully as he dressed the wound. But as soon as he had finished, the great dog was on his feet once more. Well, there's work to be done, ain't there? Does he want you to go somewhere? Evidently. I guess you're fit for duty, boy. I'll saddle up and follow. In a few minutes, King was leading the way along the trail. When he reached Andy and Bill's camp, 
the two men still lay beside their smoldering campfire. Bill was the first to revive. Take it easy. Who are you? Trust him. Off West Mother Police. Did you hit me? No. Was it you that fired the shotgun? No. No, what happened? Don't you remember anything? Andy woke up. He thought he heard something. An animal, maybe. But then we didn't hear the noise again, so... I went back to sleep. Oh, what a mistake. Then what? I heard something hit near me. And he yelled. I, I sat up. That's off. Oh, my head. You'll be all right. Andy. What about Andy? Right here. He's not... No, he's alive, but he needs a doctor, and he can't be moved. We're going to have to ride back to Dawson and bring one. Don't try to sit up, Justin. But why? Sergeant. Sergeant, we've been robbed. So that was the reason. My grub. My tools. You have no idea who it was? Didn't see him at all. All I saw was a black shadow. <laughs> I think my dog knows who did it. I think whoever hit you shot him. <laughs> no, King. I understand what you're trying to tell me, boy. He went toward Mission Creek. We can't follow him right away. I'll bring Doc Munson back with me. Just stay here, King. Hey, I remember now. I heard a dog barking just as I woke. That proves it. King saw what happened. Stay here and stand guard, King. We'll go after him as soon as I get back. It was daylight by the time the sergeant returned with the doctor. And he and King started on to Mission Creek. It was noon when Mike and Bucky reached it. Hundreds of miners had arrived before them. And the ground at the mouth of the creek was all staked. Some of the men were already washing gravel. Looks like we're late. What do you mean? Well, look for yourself. The ground's all staked. We don't want to claim around here anyway. Well, why not? Because the gold was discovered two miles upstream. We want to claim right next to discovery. Are you crazy? Those are the claims that went first. Remember me, Bucky? I'm the guy that takes what I want. <laughs> you just leave it to me, Bucky. I'll tell you when we get to our property. Now, let's keep going. The two men continued upstream. They reached the discovery claim and still kept on. But Mike stopped when they reached the third claim above discovery. There was a trapper's cabin that had been built high on the bank above the creek on this property. It hadn't been used for years, evidently, and the grizzled old prospector who had staked here had taken it over for his own use. He was sorting out his equipment in front of the cabin. And this is it, Bucky. What? This is our claim. I belongs to that old man up there. Stakes right in front of your eyes. Yeah. I wonder what happened to ours. It's ours. Why, that thieving old buzzard must have pulled it up and thrown it in the creek. <laughs> Come on. Let's go up and see what he has to say for himself. The two men climbed the bank. The old man looked up from his work and smiled at him. Well, hello, boys. You look all tired out. You think I'm taking a little rest? A long rest, Grandpa. <laughs> well, you should have got here earlier. I guess you'll have to walk most of the head of the creek before you can stake now. We're going to take our rest right here. Come on inside, Buck. Say, now, I guess you can wait until you're invited. We, uh, we just want to look around. I said come on. Well, sure, sure, go right on in. There's chairs to sit on and even a cot if you want to lie down for a while. Yeah. Looks all right. Yeah, I found everything here. Just had to clean up a little. Of course, the chair and the table are a little rickety, but I can fix them up. With gold in my front yard and a nice, tight little cabin like this, what more could a man ask? You don't have to tell us why you picked this spot, Grandpa. I'm telling you to get your stuff together and move on. What's that? Are you deaf as well as blind? I'm not blind and I'm not deaf. Well, you must have been blind if you didn't see our stake when you got here. I got here early yesterday. I was one of the first. Them helper told me about his strike on his way to Dawson. There was no stake on this claim. Naturally, you're going to try to lie out of it. We staked the day before yesterday. Right, Bucky? Yeah, that's right. No, you didn't. No, I'm not going to make trouble for you, Grandpa. At least I don't want to. I could have you thrown in jail for what you've done, you know. There was no sake on this claim when I got here. Don't waste any more of my time. Get out of here. I won't. It's my cabin. It's my claim. Do I have to throw you out? Are you asking me to hit you one? You wouldn't like it, Grandpa. Honest. I won't leave. With a flat of my hand to start with, Grandpa. No. <laughs> Shall I try it with my fist now? No. 
No, don't hit me again. Will you get out and stay out? No, no, but you won't get away with this. I'll tell the police. You do, and you won't stay healthy for long. Understand that? It don't pay to get my gravity no, so right to do this fist gives me a rough you. Let go of me. Don't hit me. You'll kill him, Mike. I'll go. I'll go. Okay, no, take her Put your stuff over there, Bucky. Now take the car. You'll have to sleep on the floor until we get another one. The old man gathered his outfit together and hurried out of the cabin. He stumbled down the slope outside, and when he reached the bank, he turned upstream. But then he heard someone riding toward him. It was Sergeant Preston, and King was racing along at his side. Oh, 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 Sergeant! What's with you, Ezra? A couple of crooks up there, Sergeant. They're trying to steal my claim. They say that they staked it first, but I swear they didn't. Looks like King's interested in those men. Yeah, I never saw them before, Sergeant, but they're crooks. I believe you're right. We've been following a man who's wanted for attempted murder, and this seems to be the end of the trail. Easy, Father. <laughs> Better wait here, Ezra. No, let me come with you, Sergeant. All right, but if there's any trouble, keep out of it. We're coming, boy. <laughs> the inside there? Right. Take it easy, Father. I know you're never wrong, but we have to make sure. Are these men armed, Ezra? I don't think so. The big one don't need a gun. He slapped me across the face, and I thought I'd been kicked by a mule. Let's see. He's back. Hey. Mike Rafferty and Bucky Andrews. Yeah. What brings you here, Sergeant? King brought me here. Ezra says you're trying to jump his claim. Yeah, I staked it yesterday. I staked it the day before. Have you forgotten you went to jail yesterday? Why, that was right after I got into town, Sergeant. And I came straight from here. Well, check in Dawson. I want to see your supplies and tools. What for? These are they, huh? Yes, just as they were described to me. Which one of you hit Andy Carlyle last night? It wasn't me. It wasn't either of us. Hey, who's Andy Carlyle? Which one of you shot King? Shot King? Hey, who'd want to do a thing like that? The man who didn't want to be trailed by him? King did trail you, though, and I have enough evidence to convict you both of assault, robbery, claim jumping, and attempted murder. In a few minutes, I'm going to arrest him. In a few minutes? Yes. I think you shot King, Mike. Why? Because of the way he's acting. I can't prove it in court, but King's word's good enough for me, and that means that you and I have a personal difference to settle. Personal? Uh, nothing to do with your job? Nothing at all. <laughs> you take off that red coat? I'm taking it off right now. Yeah, that suits me fine. Here's my gun, Ezra. Yeah. See that Bucky doesn't try to get away. Yeah. I'm going to teach you that you need your gun, Sergeant. There, Ezra. Are you sure? Just keep you... Bucky covered. Yeah. Ready, Mike? I'll show you how ready I am. <laughs> Mike's crashing right sent the sergeant staggering back across the room. Ready where you are, King. But the sergeant was off balance for only a second. Then he closed in on Mike, crashing <laughs> right and west to the larger man's face. Until he was forced to give ground. Mike had a 20-pound advantage in weight, and at least two inches in reach. But the sergeant was faster. And as they traded punches, Mike realized that here was a man who could match the power of his blows. Then suddenly, he saw an opening, and he drove a solid right to the sergeant's jaw. Once more, the sergeant staggered, and this time he hit the rickety old table. The table crashed to the floor. Mike reverted to rough and tumble tactics and leaped for the sergeant, hoping to pin him to the floor. But the sergeant had his feet up, and a violent kick on his bike reeling back to the wall. The sergeant leaped to his feet. Mike grabbed one of the chairs and charged again. With a terrific effort, he brought the chair down on the sergeant's head, only partially protected by an upraised arm. The sergeant went down, and Mike prepared to jump on him with his top nail boots. Only just in time, the sergeant rolled aside, but he had no chance to regain his feet. Mike was on top of him. First, one had the advantage and then the other as they wrestled across the floor. They were on their feet in the doorway once more. The sergeant hit Mike on the solid right to the jaw and knocked him through the door. The big man crashed to the ground outside. 
down. The sergeant went after him. Once more, they traded punches before Mike went into a clinch and wrestled the sergeant to the ground. The slope of the ground was steep. As each tried to get the upper hand, they rolled over and over down into the banks of the creek. But there wasn't enough level ground to stop them. On they went into the water with Mike on top. His bear-like paws grasped the sergeant around the throat, and he tried to hold him under the water. Then King refused to obey his master's command any longer and launched himself from the bank at Mike. Mike was knocked off balance. He was on his feet almost at once. The rest of it had been long enough for the sergeant to regain his speed as well. The sergeant summoned his strength for a supreme effort. Once more, he drove his right to Mike's jaw. The big man wavered for a moment. His hands dropped to his sides. Then he fell like a giant tree beneath the surface of the water. Come on. Let me get him onto the drone. <laughs> Ezra and Bucky hurried to the sergeant's assistance. And together they carried Mike's unconscious boat to shore. Oh, I'll take care of him. Quickly, the sergeant rolled him over and started to apply artificial respiration. Mike had inhaled only a little water. And a moment later, he sputtered and came to. The sergeant stood up and rolled him over on his back. You, Mike. You, Buggy. You're under arrest in the name of the queen. <laughs> he knocked me out. He sure did. You always said that your fish made whatever you did right. Well, it was the sergeant's right that won today. Don't forget my assistant, Ezra. It was King who brought me here. And Mike would have drowned me if it hadn't been for him. I'm grateful, King, and I don't mind telling you I'm glad the case is closed. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health. So long.